I'll have you know that I just ate five taquitos at 10.30 in the morning so that I wouldn't get hungry while we were recording. And that just felt weird. That's your fault, Grace. <laughs> anyway, welcome to episode two of the Internet Writing Buddies podcast. I am Ben, also known as the Dork in the Road. I have a YouTube channel that has 100,000 plus subscribers now, primarily focused on YouTube. Nope. Hell yeah, you do. Focused on dual sport and adventure writing uh, with moto camping there as well. And this is the lovely and fantastic Grace. I am Grace, aka the Graceful Renegade. I am on the YouTube and the Instagram. I do not have 100,000 people that follow me, but I do have an Emmy Award. So knew it was coming. we're going to roll with that. <laughs> Just to shove it in my face every time. You know what? Hey, that's, I got to have cool. something. All right. You got 100K. You got the white check. You got everything. I had to buy my blue check because people kept trying to use my account and double it for porn accounts. Great. There's $15 a month just to make sure that people aren't following the wrong person. Yeah. Sorry, dude. Got to do it. Super weird. I never have that problem. It's almost like, <laughs> I don't know. I don't get it. That's sexism. If you ask me. It is. It's very, yeah. very much so. Isn't yeah. it? Uh, what was it? Only beards or something? Yeah. Only beards. Yeah. 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 Only beards. That's a, that's a separate conversation we're going to have off camera, but yeah, there are guys making money on OnlyFans making specific yeah. types of content anyway uh our topic today uh is inspired by a conversation that we have often but specifically literally this morning i dropped a video on my channel about uh a comment it's inspired by a comment i got about uh quote unquote real camping right and this is a topic that comes up pretty often i've also seen it a ton of times i made another video about literally the thumbnail says maybe don't be a dick um, about gatekeeping in the ADV and dual sport community, about what's real off-road riding. I get this comment a lot whenever I ride on a gravel road. Well, that's not off-road, that's a road. And there's just this real undercurrent of sort of gatekeeping and elitism. And I know, probably I should preface this before we launch into this rant, because <laughs> um, I go to a lot of events, I meet a lot of people, and 99% of them are the most amazing, generous, kind, lovely, friendly helpful people I've ever met. So this is not a condemnation. Mm, that's not the word. This is not a condemnation. There we go. Right. Which is not a country filled with people that wear condoms. Um, <laughs> it is of the community. It's not a condemnation of the community. It is uh, more like pointing out and highlighting that there's this, this very vocal minority that kind of tries to make it hard for everyone else and how frustrating that is. And the other the other comment I get a lot when I post a video like this, can you tell I get focused on comments sometimes, mm -hmm. um, is don't feed the trolls. And that's not what we're doing, okay? That is no. not the goal. The goal is not to feed the trolls. The goal is to present an alternative narrative that is a more realistic portrayal of the community and the activities that we enjoy. I just, that vocal minority is so vocal. The last thing I want is people to think that's actually how it is. But yes. And this is one of those concepts, right? Where it's usually the person that is screaming and yelling the loudest is in the minority and the radical minority at that. And that is definitely the case with this right now. Uh, especially just from my perspective as a female, let me tell you the amount of comments, particularly with the camping comments I've gotten as well. And, and I've done every type of camping from dispersed in the middle of nowhere in Montana to glamping in a yurt, just like you did a couple of days ago. And it shouldn't matter where you're camping. And it's just the fact that you're even camping that matters and is awesome. So yeah, before we dive in, this is just not feeding a trolls episode, but it is a soapbox episode because Ben and I get very fired up about this very quickly. So if you're driving home from work and you want to have like a not a long episode, this is for you. <laughs> Hopefully. Although, uh, I will say this, because comments on the video this morning have been very interesting. Again, 99.9% .9 incredibly positive. But one, a couple comments, one was like, this isn't a motivate very, this isn't a very motivational video. And it just reminded me of something that our good friend Travis said to me last night. Well, if you're offended, there must be something, you must have done something to be offended about. And I just, yeah. Wanna... So that may happen and that's okay. Um, yes. The point is not to like, shame anyone or what make people feel bad necessarily it may be aware of what they're doing and the other yeah. thing i really want to point out before we dive in because this has a, it feels like maybe it's a oh first world problems you stupid influencers we're talking about your comments 
that's not what it's about because if you go into a Facebook group, you go into the online forums um, about motorcycling, about camping, you see the same stuff. And so, and, and that for a lot of people who don't have real life friends that do these things that they're kind of newly getting into camping or riding, they go to the internet first, right? That's where the community is. And it's really easy to get turned off by a comment like that. Yeah. Beginning, and we just, we want you to understand that that's not how things are supposed to be. No, this episode is going to be encouraging people to start somewhere versus being discouraged by the actual trolls that are saying, oh, this isn't real camping or, oh, if you're not doing it this way, then you're doing it wrong. Because let me tell you right now, there is no wrong way. So that's going to be my prerequisite before we jump in, which is just we want to make writing for anyone that wants to try it, writing and adventure writing and camping in particular, seem as accessible as possible. That's what Ben does with his channel all the time. It's what I do as well. So that's, yeah, that's pretty much the whole goal for, I think, both of us today. Yeah. Yeah. And it, I ben. think it's good. It's a good topic for the two of us, too, a real he said, yeah. she said, because I get the so, the sort of machismo condescending, and you do too, but like you get the mansplaining it's different. And stuff as yeah. well. So it's a you, honestly, thing. your comments are way worse though, because yours are like, they're very, um, it's, I get when it's guy to guy, the cut is much deeper. Like as a, as a female, and I'm sorry to get on a soapbox here. I have been mansplained to my whole life. Oh, uh, so, by the way, mansplaining grace is when a man explains something to you. I just want you thank to- you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I, I wasn't, wasn't quite sure what the okay. term was. I appreciate you taking yeah. a moment to explain that to me. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. But yes, so I, I think it's just different, but you should definitely touch on some of the comments you get and why they're wrong, I think, as we kind of get in here. Yeah, it's just, it's just funny. And it's something I've dealt with. There's really multiple prongs here. There's the whole, if it's not hardcore, it doesn't count. And there's the whole, if you don't suffer, it doesn't count. Like if you do yeah. something to make yourself comfortable or make the the journey easier or perfect example, just start with this because I've been making videos for a while. And, and for the longest time, um, I just didn't want to ride my 250L from home. Uh, I like to ride in crappy weather in the woods, but I don't, I didn't ride it up there uh, for a couple of reasons. One, it's cold. And two, uh, just fuel capacity because it, you know, it's 30 miles from the, from the nearest gas station to the woods. It only had a two gallon tank. So by the time I got there, I get what, 15 minutes and I have to turn around. So I would just throw it in the back of the truck and drive up there. And uh, so many comments, like second I saw the truck, I turned it off. Like, okay. And you know what? Maybe, and that's you. People can do their own thing. Like, that's the thing I don't want to do is like, be like, well, it's actually wrong if you do it hardcore. It isn't. It's just people need to mind their own damn business. Like do whatever makes you happy. The point was to get out and ride in the woods and explore. And because I drove up there, I got to go farther. I got to stay out longer. Um, and I wasn't spending the whole time thinking about, well, I better leave earlier so that I don't get too cold on the ride home, whatever. It was just like, as soon as I'm cold, I'll turn around and back at the truck. And at least I can change my clothes and get warm and ride home. So I'll stay out longer. I just, there's advantages and disadvantages both ways. But the point is really to do the thing in the way that makes the most sense to you and the way that makes you happy how you choose to enjoy and use your own property is your own damn business yeah yeah i think my one of my favorite comments i get when i do anything camping related is the oh you should have done this or upgraded to this or brought this with you or what have you and I think it's very fascinating because first of all, I always love suggestions. If there's better gear out there, like absolutely recommend that. But the minute you're starting to try, so, try and tell somebody they're doing something wrong is where I have an issue. Like you said, like if you have a day where you want to just take the bike up with the truck, you should be able to do that. You don't need to be camping out in 40 degrees and rain every time you go ride, especially when you do live in a place like we do in Oregon, where you know, we ride all year round, even when it's shitty out. And that's just kind of how it is. But that doesn't mean we're camping every time. Also, there's a lot of days where I go out in the afternoons after work and I go ride. I'm not going to go camp out there just for the hell of it to say I did it. And that kind of dives into the narrative you brought up in the YouTube episode, which I appreciated so much after all the traveling I did last year, which is this idea that you need to suffer with like the type two fun thing to make it an awesome experience 
which again is total BS. I have been on both sides of that equation on an international and national scale. And most of the time when I wasn't suffering, the ride and the experience and the travel were way more enjoyable. Granted, like you get great stories out of suffering and camping. And, you know, one of my favorite stories I had was I camped in the Redwoods on my trip from border to border last year. And I didn't get to my camp spot until about 830 at night. It was cold, but it was a great little spot. I was just completely by myself. There was no one around probably for a couple of miles, which was just what I wanted. But it was super easy. I was on a platform. Everything was ready to go for me. I had a beer. I put my tent up. And then it immediately became a suffering experience because I had raccoons inv- invade my camp. <laughs> a couple a couple hours later, I had coyotes in my camp. I didn't. And at this point, I don't consider myself a professional, but I know how to camp. Nothing. No food is left out. There's just animals everywhere. Right. So you well, had a round of raccoons. Right around a coyotes. And then starting at about two 30 in the morning, I had to listen to what I think was a big horn owl slowly kill slash murder a small animal that is screaming for about 20 minutes before it finally dies. So I get to sleep at about two 33 o'clock and then it starts again because he found another snack. So by about 5. AM I'm just laying there wide eyed, miserable. And Honestly, one of the things that I find negative about those experiences is then if you are riding the next day, you don't enjoy the ride. You're exhausted. Like who wants to have a time like that? I would have much rather been glamped out in a hotel even that night just to get a good night of sleep so I could enjoy the ride. And yeah, certainly it's fun to suffer. And I love telling this story now, but it's just an example of one of many stories where like, I just remember how awful I felt in the morning and how many Red Bulls it took to keep me conscious on the motorcycle. And it was not healthy at all. Not Ugh. safe either. It, it like Mm-mm. It's not safe at all. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. Get that that uh, the whole credit card camper thing, the, you know, cause some people will run the BDR and stay in a hotel every night and yeah. you know, damn, that's a great idea because you don't have to carry so much crap with you. Um, yes. I don't like having it planned out where I'm going to stay. So, um, no. it's nice. To, I like to be able to adjust on the, and I like camping, but, yeah. uh, you know, I wouldn't mind hitting hotel one night on the trip just to get a shower in or whatever. Like that doesn't, that doesn't diminish the experience and it doesn't d- diminish. You're still doing the riding. I think riding and right. camping, it is different than riding yeah. the BDR, but you rode the BDR. Like no one can say that you didn't, if you stay in a hotel every night and it's the yeah. same, with, like the supported trip. Like I'm not pretending that my uh my Baja trip was as difficult or uh you know involved as it would have been to ride down there and carry all my camping gear and or even just luggage enough to like stay in a hotel like it's nice to be supported but there were so many advantages to that too like when the guy broke his arm like that would have been a day ender for us and we just called the support truck and kept riding I mean after we got him help obviously but you know, it, there are just there left are him on the side of the road. No big deal. Right. We, I was <laughs> like, oh, it sucks, bro. Survival of the fittest piece. Uh, no, but, the, you know, the, I still got to experience Baja and I got to experience it in a stress free way. And I, you know, I'm an anxious person, shocker. And, uh, you know, just knowing that that if something went sideways, it was taken care of really made me feel a lot better about going to Mexico. And it's a good yeah. way. Like, and now if I went back, I would consider doing it on my own. Because, yeah, because you, yeah. you've done it and you understand what the experience entails, you know, mm-hmm. it's, it's all about context. Like I spent three months living off my motorcycle last summer and it, that was summer 2022. So summer and a half ago, actually, but it's not exactly as ideal for the riding aspect of it either. You know, if you're packing that much stuff on your bike, like I had all sorts of tech and film equipment with me, as well as all my camping gear, as well as enough stuff to try and survive for a couple of months. And you don't get the riding then if you're packing that much with you. Whereas if you're going to do a BDR experience or a trip like Ben did in Baja, sometimes it is nice to have support because then you're more focused on the riding versus just survival. And if you're doing a trip like that, I think it's important to remember that like, who cares if you sleep in a hotel? The point is you're out riding and having a good time and either trying to become a better rider or just literally out there for the experience and adventure of that ride itself. Right. One is not 
better or cooler yeah. or more correct than the other. I think if someone who did Baja on their own, you know, hears that I did it supported, the comment should not be, well, you didn't really do Baja. The comment should be, wasn't Bahia de Concepcion gorgeous? You know, exactly, like which that. it is. Highly recommend everyone go. There's also yes. a really great fish taco uh, restaurant right there. Go in. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I, I totally agree with you. It shouldn't be nitpicking little things. I mean, especially when you and I have done the whole spectrum of camping. I don't know. I just, it's funny to me that you get a lot of these guys that are on their own soapboxes about it. It's not a legitimate experience unless you're suffering or camping or doing all of this because it's just not the reality yeah and there's you know not to call it anyone specifically but a real element of projection there i think you know they and and to maybe not play devil's advocate but at least try to see it from the other perspective you know you work hard to do things that are difficult and you know and so like i said in the video the contrast effect you value those things more that's that's basic human psychology and so but, but they're all called the same thing. So like moto camping, uh, you know, you do it, as I said in the video, on the top of a mountain with a sharp stick. And I do it once in a while in a yurt or a cabin. And you're like, this guy's not as hardcore as me. He can't say he's doing the same thing as me. But I am. And anyone who, like, I, I get great messages all the time from people that are like, you know, I, I finally found the courage to go out and go moto camping on my own. I'm in a state park. You know, I'm sitting on a, at a picnic table and it's just so great to get out and experience this. And like what people forget, I think this is the, this is one of the biggest things I run into, both with motorcycling and with camping, is that um, that well, they lack one empathy. They don't think about other people's perspective. They only they only see their own perspective. And a lot of people who do these two things started when they were kids. Um, if you started riding motorcycles when you were a kid, you have no idea what it's like to start riding as an adult who uh, is afraid of getting hurt. Um, when you fall down, it does hurt. Like kids are fearless. And, and so much of off-road riding in particular is about confidence. And when you're yeah. a kid, you know, you just, you bounce right up and things are easier. And, and it's so much harder to build that and those skills. And you have re like legit real fears. Like if I hurt myself, I can't work. And what happens yeah. to my family? And, you know, so like, you don't want to push as hard when you have those things going on, but people forget, they forget what it's like to be new or they never knew. And so yeah. they judge people based on where they're standing. Like to someone like perfect example, I still get nervous when I camp disperse camp in the woods by myself. Every time I ha I think about the dumbest stuff. You know why? Because that is the survival instinct in your brain kicking on and going, Hey, there are predators out here. Right, dummy. We need to make sure we're sharp in case shit gets weird. So right, which, that's which is never natural. Like, and yeah. I know that, especially around here, there is nothing. You know, the worst thing that's going to happen is a raccoon is going to sneak into my camp, or like what happened to Tim at the Dork camp out. Two squirrels are going to get into my tent and poop everywhere. <laughs> uh, but well, this the is point okay. Is, so this this makes really quick. This just makes yeah. me flash to something just about the fear thing and getting used to that with dispersed or anything. I had a really good friend of mine who lives on the road say this to me, which is you should be afraid. And if you're not, there's a problem, you know, because you should be conscious of what's going on around you. You don't need to be scared and shaking and have an anxiety attack. That's something you can get used to over time, but you should have the little radar in the back of your brain going, I am alone. I need to be aware and I need to be smart. Anyway, continue. Yeah. I forgot what I was saying, but you reminded me of something else that, <laughs> <laughs> the most dangerous time for motorcyclists. When do they get into the most accidents? Do you know? End of the day? No, I mean in the in terms of riding experience. Um, I don't know actually. So it's not the beginning. It's not when you're a very brand new rider because you're hyper cautious and focused on everything. It's yeah. when you become a sophomore when you start to think you know what's going on, but you actually don't. Oh, uh, this is so a great segue for me when you're done. <laughs> oh, good. So it's like after you get a couple thousand miles, but before you have everything really muscle memory reaction, like you're still thinking about it, but you think that you're good. It's that sort of sophomore period that um, people get into the most accidents because they stop paying attention. They stop being afraid, but their yeah. skills aren't there yet. Yeah. I mean, I am, I am the perfect example of that. I've been riding motorcycles since I was 22, but I didn't get into any off-road riding until two years ago. And I went from zero to hero 
so fast. And like in nine months, my skill set developed very quickly. And I was fearless. I didn't have any fear whatsoever. And then in June of 2022, I got in a wreck that I should not have walked away from. I should have died. And that was a huge checkpoint for me, especially being an adult. Now I have fear. Now I'm aware. Now I'm very conscious of how I ride. I ride smart. I ride a little bit more tapered. I'm a little slower, but it's because of that exact thing you talked about, which is, you know, if you don't have that fear, you're going to make mistakes. And I definitely did that being at the skill level I was, and also not having the years of experience under my belt. I went from riding like a maniac and doing a lot of stupid shit to being kind of a grandma and I'm okay with it because I love it, but that's just kind of what happens sometimes. Yep. Yep. Well, I mean, thank God you're still with us. Very happy about that myself. Be very yeah, sad would, without Grace. <laughs> it's super hard to record this podcast if you were dead. I know. It's true. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's really my priority. I know. Yeah, yeah. It's all about you. I know. Right. I mean, duh. Yeah. Duh. Yes. <sighs> yeah. Did we, well, hold on. Do we segue out of the topic? Keep going quick. Uh, words. Words. Well, mm-hmm. so, okay. That, there's a lull. There's a natural pause, which is a good time for me to throw in another point I wanted to make about this topic. And that's Mark. Yeah. Yeah. Marketing for not so much from camping, I guess, um, some of it, but for, for motorcycles and adventure and dual sport motorcycles in particular, which they're going hard on in terms of marketing because they're the only segments of the industry that are growing. So everybody's trying to get a piece. Um, you see, there's a ton of new, this year, ICMA, man, what was there, like seven or eight new models, mostly Chinese, but a ton of new bikes were introduced. Nice. Even Honda's is redoing the CB500X. Like throwing the old NX logo on there, which is awesome. Um, yeah. Those were great bikes, by the way. But anyway, I digress. The point is, the marketing in the dual sport and adventure space is generally all the time. Poltar is jumping a T7 over a cliff, over a canyon, out of a rock quarry, um, doing ridiculous things. And uh, the marketing for this segment does not represent the reality of this segment in any way i see the same thing in the uh, responses to the trans alp well that's not a real hardcore off-road bike it is in no way intended to be no And, and i made that same mistake at the beginning because we're so just like immersed in this everything's hardcore and awesome and it has to be the most capable when the reality is the vast majority um i always the example i always use is go to an adventure rally go to an adventure rally and look around how many pole taras looking dudes do you see not and how many dudes do you see that look like me? A lot. <laughs> Adventure motorcycling is not cheap. It's all middle-aged established people who can afford these bikes and this gear. And like, there's nothing cheap about it. Uh, it yeah. So, no. so and, and so that creates a barrier to entry. That makes people think you have to ride at a certain level in order to enjoy this. And it's just not true. And the same applies to camping. Yes. And I think that's such a good point because you do see so much of that. And coming from somebody who does work behind brands and does brand marketing. I mean, I'll be the first person to tell you the marketing strategies that do the best are when you do have those crazy guys doing these insane things on these bikes off road. And you're right though. The reality though, is those guys are few and far between. And like, we've kind of seen, you know, like my buddy Chad got hurt and he's one of the best riders. I know if you ride at that consistent high level, bad things can happen because it's just, you're just pushing the envelope all the time. And the the other side of it is the majority of us who are out there enjoying it. It's like me and Ben and the mud video that you did, where it's like, we're just out having a great time. I'm screaming puddles in the Senna. And then we go have a couple beers afterwards and just had a good day put- putting around and, and really enjoying being outside. That is more of what adventure and dual sport riding is. And that kind of mashup with marketing again applies to camping it's like you have to be in the middle of the sahara by yourself for 400 miles with drinking the no blood water. of a rabbit snake. Yeah. and then you will be a legitimate adventurer and that is such bullshit it's such bullshit i mean the whole point of having an adventure is just to get outside of your comfort zone and everybody's comfort zone is different for some people even just being out of town for an afternoon is out of their comfort zone. And 
if that's what you want to do, then that's what you get to do and go enjoy it. You don't need to listen to all these other dumbass dudes who think that they know what's best. And half the time they haven't even been out riding in 10 years. Just saying. Mm, sips tea pointedly. Coffee. Just saying. Mm. I did. Mm. I left that shot in my video because I thought it was funny because I did that. <laughs> made some point i'm sure somebody would pick up on it uh, so if the, what's the definition of real because i would argue that it is the thing the most common version of whatever thing you're talking about and if that's what? the case so, say that again what so, real something's real yeah would you agree that that must that probably means the most common version of it like what is yes. the, okay because yeah. that makes like realistically so what's the most common version of adventure writing it is not poltara's it is not uh, blasting through the desert on an 890 Adventure R at full speed, doubling up on whoops. It is average people going out and riding at an average speed. That's the whole, the point, the word average, right? That's what it yeah. means. Um, yeah. And having fun and using their, their bikes and their camping gear in the way that makes the most sense for them. So really the average experience is the real experience. And I would argue that the, the stuff that these other people are advocating for is actually exceptional. I mean, assuming yeah. they're actually doing it, a lot of these people, yeah. a lot of these, uh, some people see the marketing and then just make judgments about other people based on that, but never actually do anything themselves. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the more normal, the majority, the people you see out are, it's, you know, people going out and doing a BDR. I mean, it's a great, it's like what you did last summer. That is more of what fits the frame. And even you guys, like, you know, you don't usually have people doing a week. Sometimes you have people that just do weekends and they just go ride off road and camp up in the mountains and then come back. Or you have, you know, a weekend trip where you have a couple of ADV routes planned, but you're also on pavement and you camp at a state park. That's normal. You know, that that's more of what you see, not you know, even with what I've done, like it's not super normal, like going to Asia, that's not the not average, normal. you know, that's, Sorry. that's, an, uh, that's an adventure trip, which is a whole other ball game. We'll have another soapbox about that, but yeah, it's, it's just the more normal thing is yeah. Me and my friend Michaela going and riding after work yesterday, got out for two hours, did some dirt tracks, came home, fed my dogs. That's normal. Yep. The most common motorcycle camping trip is an overnighter. Yes. Um, one night, one night. It is yeah. for sure for me. That's the most, and I love those. The only thing I hate is like setting everything up and then immediately having to take it down the next day. So yeah. I like base camping and riding from a place. Um, but that's for Travis, by the way, he loves the word base camp. Uh, but of course he does. It, the vast majority of trips are riding out to a place, camping there, even like for me. And I do this, I definitely camp more than most people yeah. because it's my job. And uh, the vast majority of mine are out overnighters out and back type thing. Yeah, so like that's, that's and that's such a good point right there, which is it's for your job. So you get to do it more. Most people work nine to five and their only free time is on the weekend. So they camp out for a night, maybe two if they're lucky. Mm -hmm. That's all you're supposed to be. You know, that, that's not supposed to be. That's all people have time for. That's it. Yeah. I mean, and and. Uh, I'm making a point here, but I'm not saying that not doing that is not real either. Like there's no such thing as real. Real is what you want to do. If you yes. think you're camping, you are. And if that means roasted marshmallows in your backyard and freaking sleeping in your bed, good for you. Everybody starts somewhere. Yeah. And going out and like going out and camping on your own is scary to people. Maybe you don't want to sleep on the ground, but you want to experience camping. Go stay in a yurt or a cabin. Right. Maybe you don't want to cook while you're camping. You don't want to deal with that. Go to a restaurant. You know, you don't want yeah. to eat a bag meal. They're gross. I get it. Like, it's OK. On BDRs, I mostly eat gas station food like oh yeah, because I don't want to stop riding. So it's like, give me a corn dog and a burrito and let's keep going. Oh, like, my God. That's all we did in Asia was just like 7-Eleven, like because you just have like and, and that was a lot of very similar to how you would do a road riding trip here, which is it's gas station food. That's just how it is a lot of the time, because. You have limited capacity to pack on the bike as it is. Mm -hmm. If you have camping gear on there, you know, you're already taking up a lot of space. Yeah, I love cooking a steak over the fire. But yeah. I'll be damned if I'm doing that on a long trip. Thank God for yeah. Tim, because he loves that stuff more than I do. Like, 
I'm just tired and I don't want the complication and worrying about firewood and everything. Thank yes. God for you, by the way, because the one time we had a steak on the, yeah, this is a perfect example. I am not cooking food on a long trip like that. I'm not usually even carrying it. Like I have a bag meals for emergencies, but I want to eat gas stations. But sometimes you get really lucky and you camp near town on purpose um, where your friend lives and she brings you firewood and steaks and beer and it's the best night of your whole trip. So still camping, still camping, still camping. I slept on the ground, bro. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, that's probably the, uh, the best way to kind of wrap that whole thought is it's just, it's whatever you want it, it to be, you know, it's, it's whatever you feel that camping is to you is camping. And however you want to do that on a motorcycle is up to you entirely. Um, I get asked a lot what it's like to, you know, kind of live on the road and do all of that. And I was very fortunate at a time when I started camping and doing all of that almost every day, I just jumped into the deep end and figured it out. But the best way to actually get started is just to try camping out even one night in a state park. If you hate it, you don't have to do it again. Mm -hmm. Don't, don't listen to these guys that tell you that that's the only way to camp. You know, if you need to do hotels, you do hotels. If you need to do restaurants, do restaurants. I recommend it. I usually don't pack food on my trips. I usually either do gas station food or grab something when we stop at a grocery store. That's it. Or subway, but no more subway. One of the great parts of traveling is getting to go to these restaurants and places you haven't been. Like, yeah, that's why you're not backpacking. Like, yeah. I'm on a motor vehicle, so I have the I have flexibility and freedom to try things and do things, you know, differently. You want to yep. suffer, start backpacking. That's uh yeah, that's a lot. So and just to echo what Grace is saying, and the, the point of this conversation is you're gonna see those comments, but they don't represent the majority and they also don't represent reality. There's often a you know, people are, they're either mad that you're doing the same thing as them and calling it the same thing, or they're concerned um, about their own skills and hardcoreness. And for some reason, uh, they, they cover up for that by projecting onto other people. Like, if you're happy with what you're doing, um, or if you're at least comfortable, and it's, it's a first step on the way to whatever it is that your ultimate goal is, you're in the right place. However you choose to ride your motorcycle is up to you. If you never leave the pavement on your GS, I don't care. And no one else should either. Uh, no. Do what makes sense to you. Go out, have fun, push your comfort zone, like Grace is saying, but in a safe and comfortable way. And you never know where the path leads. But if if you see the most hardcore stuff, and you think, well, I can't do that, so I might as well not try this garbage. Okay. Yeah. There's varying levels of everything. Do not get discouraged. Do what makes sense to you and get out there and enjoy the outdoors, enjoy your motorcycle, enjoy your life in the way that makes sense to you. And don't yeah. get to whiny baby haters. And if you have whiny baby haters, that means that they're either insecure or they have a tiny dick. So either way, there you Whoa. go. I didn't say it. I didn't say it. I did. Also, Very proudly. <laughs> yeah. Well, Sorry. Was, no comment. If, uh, that's fine. If you have I, to tell somebody about how they have to do something, right. I think you need to look in the mirror and right. ask yourself why you give a shit about what somebody else is doing. Just I'm just going to nod furiously. <laughs> that's what I'm going to do. It's all right. I'll fall on the sword. I get yeah. it. All good. No, that's a great way to end it. So, um, <laughs> Grace, always great chatting with you. And I'm so excited that we're doing this together. So hopefully you're watching this um, on YouTube or listening to it wherever podcasts can be found. And our, our goal is to put out a couple a month, maybe even three mm -hmm. or four, depending on the month. Yep. So yeah. follow, subscribe, do all those things. Um, Grace, why don't you remind us of your socials? Uh, I am the Graceful Renegade on YouTube and Instagram. Please follow me, Ben. Dork in the Road on YouTube and a Dork in the Road on Instagram because somebody who made a channel where they unboxed toys 10 years ago got Dork in the Road <laughs> and they still have the account for some reason. I, I didn't know that. I always wanted to ask you and then I always forget. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's All fun. right. Makes sense. Anyway. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. We really appreciate it. This has been a really fun episode. Um, and uh, we'll try and give you something a little uh, a little more logically set Pra practical. next round. Yeah. All right, cool. In the meantime, live wild, ride free. And don't forget to be excellent to each other. I like you.
拜拜。